a wide variety of USDA programs available to us. And we're lucky to have Rachel and her team who are committed to partnering with us so that we have every opportunity to utilize not only the programs, but to tap into the considerable expertise available to us at USDA. So with that, Rachel, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Like Chris said, my name is Rachel Santos, and I'm the State Executive Director for the Farm Service Agency here in Georgia. As you know, FSA is a federal agency of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and our mission is to serve all producers by effectively and efficiently delivering ag programs so that the producers, you, can continue to do what you do best, produce the safest, most abundant, and most affordable food supply in the world. We strive to be a customer-driven agency, and I hope that your interactions with your local offices have been a pleasant experience. I know that at times, navigating through FSA programs for the specialty crop producer can feel like fitting a square peg into a round hole. Some of our programs may seem complex and cumbersome, but ultimately, they can provide a much needed safety net for difficult times. My goal today is to give you a quick overview of our programs that might be of most interest to you, regardless of the size of your operation. I'll touch on NAP, acreage reporting, farm storage facility loans, and the organic certification cost share program, to name a few. We are here to serve, so please utilize us and see your local FSA office and our program offerings as an asset to your operation. Please hang in here with me today, and at the end of this presentation, I'll have our specialists with me to help to answer any and all of your questions. They are such a great resource. Now, let's dive in. Most of you are probably familiar with NAP, our Non-Insured Crop Disaster Assistance Program. While complex, NAP is designed to reduce your financial losses that may occur when natural disasters cause a loss of production or prevented planning of an eligible crop. Who's eligible for NAP? Landowners or tenant sharecroppers who share in the risk of producing an eligible crop, noting that an individual or entity AGI cannot exceed $900,000 to be eligible. For eligible participants, basic or catastrophic coverage provides a maximum payment of $125,000. Buy-up coverage provi provides a maximum of $300,000 per crop year. Now, eligible crops are that are commercially grown for food, fiber, and seed. Additionally, aquaculture species, ornamental nurseries, Christmas trees, sod, and hemp are also all covered by NAP as well. Furthermore, the crop must be successfully grown in the area to be eligible for coverage. So that means no experimental crops and, and they're not eligible. Do note, however, that NAP will not cover crops if RMA ensures that specific crop in a county. Georgia requires irrigation for fruit and vegetable coverage in all counties with the exception of 11 North Georgia counties. Now, what is an eligible cause of loss? Eligible primary causes of loss and loss conditions include damaging weather, such as drought, hail, excessive moisture, freeze, tornadoes, hurricanes, excessive wind, and or lightning. These losses are considered primary causes and will stand alone in determining eligibility. Related conditions or secondary losses, which are not eligible on their own, include excessive heat, plant disease, or insect infestation. A secondary loss must be accompanied by an eligible primary cause of loss, so damaging weather and adverse natural occurrence, etc. Also important to note, drought on irrigated crops, unless the drought affected the water source, is not an eligible cause of loss. All right, now that you've found that you're an eligible producer with eligible crops and you head down to your local FSA office, you have a, you have a couple of coverage options, basic and buy-up. To obtain buy-up coverage, a producer must have successfully produced the crop in the previous year. 
Proof of acceptable crop production and planting history must be submitted prior to the application closing date and show that at least 50% of the county expected yield was produced unless the producer suffered a loss on the crop due to a cause of loss considered eligible for NAP. Buy-up allows for a choice of coverage levels of 50%, 55%, 60%, or 65% of the producer's approved yield at 100% of the average market price. On the other hand, basic NAP coverage is equal to 50% of the producer's approved yield at 55% of the average market price. Basic coverage requires an eligible loss of yield or inventory in excess of 50% to generate a payment. Additionally, when determining prevented planning losses, Producers must be prevented from planting more than 35% of the total eligible acreage intended for planting of the eligible crop. When making these coverage decisions, know that you may select different coverage options for each specific crop type on your NAP application. There is a small service fee for all coverage levels, $325 per crop with a maximum fee of $825 per producer per administrative county, and with a $1,950 maximum fee for a producer with farming interests in multiple counties. The premium is applicable to buy up coverage and is the lesser of the formula you see here, or 5.25% times the applicable payment limitation. Note the max premium is capped at $15,750 per producer or legal entity per crop year. Also, if a producer meets the definition of a beginning farmer, limited resource, socially disadvantaged, or veteran farmer, the service fee is waived and the premium is reduced by 50%. And just for awareness, premium bills are mailed in February. Here is an image of the NAP basic provisions. The basic provisions include all of the information a producer needs to remain compliant for NAP. Make sure that the county office gives you a copy or you can review it online. It is extremely important to report your acreage timely, not only for NAP, but for many other FSA programs. For annually planted fruits and vegetables, the acreage reporting deadline is 15 days after the established final planting date for that planting period. Also, please review the approved double cropping lists posted in your county office to ensure eligibility. Keep in mind, if you have a double cropping combination that is not on the approved list, you must request this via your local county office by December 31st, and it must be approved prior to planting. Policy requires a notice of loss be reported within 72 hours of when the loss became apparent for all fruit and vegetables and rapidly deteriorating crops so that a loss adjuster can perform an inspection to verify the loss. Talk with your local county office about deadlines. They can provide all the applicable dates for the specific crops for which you are seeking coverage. While it may seem complicated, I can't tell you how many folks I've seen miss out on their payment just due to acreage reports or applications not being filed timely, things that are in your control. So, with so many significant and impactful weather events that have happened in the past few years, producers have benefited, benefited from their participation when disaster hits, that NAP payment can make a difference in your livelihood. Stay tuned and towards the end of this presentation, I'll give you a tool to help you stay on top of all of these deadlines. Moving on. Farm storage facility loans are something that you might not be as familiar with. These loans are a great resource if you are interested in building or acquiring something that can assist you in storing, handling, and or transporting your eligible commodities. For especially crop producers, this can be anything from cold storage to drying and handling and storage equipment 
including storage and handling trucks. This is something that many folks don't realize. As the desire for locally grown food grows, for example, you can utilize this loan program to obtain a refrigerated truck to transport your produce to your desired restaurant or market. For this program, an eligible borrower is any person who is a landowner, landlord, leaseholder, tenant, or sharecropper. Eligible borrowers must be able to show repayment ability and meet other requirements to qualify for a loan. Financing is available for new construction and for upgrading existing facilities. The facility or upgrade must have a useful life or at least the term of the loan. Eligible facilities, equipment, and upgrades include oxygen limiting structures, safety equipment such as ladders and lighting, and cold storage buildings, including prefab buildings. Also, they may include cooling, circulating, and monitoring and electrical equipment. A list of eligible equipment can be obtained from your local county office. The facility cannot be used for commercial purposes. It must be for the sole use of the borrower, and there is a $100 non-refundable application fee. Farm storage facility microloans are also available. These are for loans up to $50,000, and the structure or equipment is the collateral or security. For all loans over $50,000, Additional security is required, such as real estate or an irrevocable letter of credit from your bank. And just FYI, FSA prefers first position on the land on which the facility is located if the security is real estate. One very important thing about farm storage facility loans, no groundbreaking or ground disturbing activities can begin prior to approval. If this occurs, the loan cannot be approved and there are absolutely no exceptions. Next, we have our organic certification cost share program. This program is fairly self-explanatory as it provides a partial reimbursement for organic certification. Once certified, organic producers and handlers are eligible to receive reimbursement for up to 50% of certification costs each year, up to a maximum of $500 per certification scope. FSA started administering this program in 2017, and at that time, the maximum reimbursable amount was $750. It did decrease this year in 2020 to a maximum of $500. Your actual certificate will specify which scope it covers, but these are the four areas that are included, crops, livestock, wild crops, and handling processing. Who's eligible? Certified organic producers and handlers who have paid certification fees during the applicable program year may apply for reimbursement of incurred costs. Keep in mind, that program funds are limited and that applications are paid on a first come first served basis. And applications received after all funds are obligated will not be paid. The program year 2020 application deadline was October 31st, 2020 and program year 2020 sign up dates are October 1st, 2020 through October 31st, 2021. And just quickly, Eligible costs include application fees, inspection costs, fees related to equivalency agreements and or arrangement requirements, travel and or per diem for inspectors, user fees, sales assessments, and postage. Finally, FSA isn't always known for being technologically advanced. However, we do now have a really great tool called GovDelivery where offices can text and email you important dates, like the acreage reporting deadlines and sales closing dates, and new program information. Considering the high financial stakes of ensuring you meet deadlines for our programs, I encourage you to call your local office today and sign up for this so that you can stay on top of everything. I appreciate you including FSA during this virtual conference. 
I hope that this information has been helpful to you and I encourage you to reach out to your local offices to ensure that you're taking advantage of all that we have to offer. Thank you for what you do each and every day to feed us. My team and I will now take any questions you may have.